How are you doing everybody? My name is Dr. Sami Baya. Please welcome back to my YouTube channel. One thing about narcissists, they are master manipulators. Their main mission is to use you, then discard you. They only focus on their own needs. They are self-absorbed, selfish, self-centered, egocentric, egotistic individuals. The other name for narcissists is me, 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 me. It's always about them. Now they lack empathy. They are very arrogant. These individuals. When you are dealing with a narcissist, you are dealing with someone who needs constant attention, constant validation, constant recognition, reassurance, to be praised all the time. Now, what things do narcissists do when they are alone? What happens? Sometimes you are figuring, you are asking yourself questions. What could my narcissist be doing now that they are alone? What are they doing? One thing about narcissists, they have a hard time being alone. They struggle being alone. Why? Because narcissists always need constant validation from others, from their victims. They need constant praise, constant attention, constant recognition, reassurance admiration so to maintain this self-image to maintain their sense of of worth remember narcissists have fragile egos so they have to seek the narcissistic supply in form of this constant attention constant admiration the praise the validation so when narcissists are alone what they'll find themselves doing is self-admiration they might even go to the mirror, start admiring how they are. They sometimes turn to social media. They turn to Facebook, spend so many hours in Facebook, so many hours in Instagram, in Twitter, trying to get attention, whether negative or positive. They'll try to manipulate people through their comments. They'll try to co cause conflicts and drama to get attention. And when they're alone, the narcissist will be busy planning, thinking hard how they're going to manipulate everybody around them, how they're going to control their victims. Because narcissists need to control everything about their victims. They need to control how they think, how they dress, how they what they eat, everything about them. Sometimes the narcissists, when they are alone, they realize that they need more narcissistic supply. They start asking themselves questions. Why are they alone? Because narcissists hate being alone. They are incapable of self-reflection. So when they are alone, they are suffering. They need a lot of validation. So they will start find, hoover, they'll try hovering their exes. They'll try reaching out to their exes, trying to, you know, call them, text mess, text them, try to stalk them on social media platforms. They want to know what's happening so that they can hoover them back. Again, narcissists get bored easily. So when they're alone, they're already bored. They're thinking of, of the next supply, the new supply. So they'll also be hunting for new supply in the social media platforms, in Facebook. They'll be hunting who who can they add into their list of supplies they they are busy searching for backup plans you know for back burners for their relationships because these narcissists have fragile egos to deal with their fragile egos to deal with their that weakness within them they need many lots of narcissistic supply Narcissists love dramas and chaos. Even when they're alone, they're thinking on how they can cause drama and chaos everywhere, even when they're they are not near people. Online, they'll try to create conflicts, drama, confusion. Now, when narcissist is alone, they, they think of how they can get more admiration, more attention, more validation, more reassurance. They start thinking of activities that will add them that. They'll start thinking about what they've achieved in their life, their accomplishments. They'll start thinking of 
activities that will boost their fragile egos. They'll start reaching out to people, to potential victims, to their exes, to their supplies by phone, by text messages, by on, on social media platforms, on WhatsApp, to exaggerate their achievements, to brag about their their their, their success, to talk about themselves, to 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 seek praise and validation and attention. They they will be talking on phone with their with with, with their supplies. Remember one thing about narcissists, they love their voice, they love listening to themselves talk, they love listening to their to themselves speak. So when they are alone, they will do anything to, to also get validation from that. They'll call their victims for long hours and as they are talking, they are enjoying themselves. They will talk a lot and their victims will only be listening. They spend so many hours on Facebook, on Instagram, on on. on on all social media platforms, mainly to promote their image. Narcissists really care about their image, about their reputation. They'll be posting content that exaggerates their accomplishments, their, their, their success. They'll be showing off how successful they are materially because they need constant admiration from everybody else. They need constant attention. They they will be making comments to attract uh, new new supplies to attract new victims again narcissists are master manipulators they always want more power more control over everybody around them they will always be thinking of what can they do to boost their fragile egos what can they do to control everyone and everything around them what can they do to be dominant to assert their dominance now, hey, if you are still watching this video, don't go anywhere. Now, the narcissist, when they are alone, they'll think of more manipulative strategies that they can use on their victims because they need more control. So they'll be strategizing, coming with plans, scheming to control and to up their game, to up their manipulative mind games. And again, the narcissist does this because they need to be more superior than everyone else. Because they need to be more important. To, they need to be, you know, to be special than everyone else. So they spend a lot of time working on their image. Working on, their, on how they're going to interact with others. They'll be thinking of their past interactions with others. This alone makes them happy. It boosts their ego. So that's why you find narcissists. They cannot easily be alone because they need lots and lots and lots of supply. Again, they will also get into manipulative strategies like triangulation. They can do it even when they are alone through you know, social media platforms. WhatsApping, texting, inboxing their victims here and there, creating drama, chaos, conflict, unnecessary competition, creating jealousy between their their victims to boost their fragile ego, to boost their self-image, to maintain full control over everyone else. Again, narcissists, when they are alone, they are suffering. They are thinking of having a backup plan of an assisted supplier. That's why when they're alone, they'll start thinking of cheating. If they have a, a, if they're married, they'll be thinking of, of, of having someone else who can give them extra validation. You know, they'll be, th they'll, they'll be thinking of having a back burner relationship. You know, a relationship that can boost their fragile egos, because narcissists always are seeking external validation. So, narcissists relationship, narcissistic relationships are tough. When you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you are in hot soup. You need to plan your exit as quickly as now. When you are in a narcissistic relationship, it is not a piece of cake. It is one of the toughest and most painful things every victim had to do 
being in a relationship with a narcissist is like having the worst dream ever in your life. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist, what you want to do is to run away, to go no contact, to disappear from that narcissist. You want them to just vanish from your life. But that is not possible. Because you have children with this narcissist. Children have tied the two of you together for the rest of your life. Now, you want to protect your kids from this narcissist. But this narcissist is a parent too to your children. So you have to find a way to co-parent with them in the most in the best way possible. Now, there are different ways for co-parenting with a narcissist. And that, is, that is what we are going to look at in this video. Number one way is don't let the narcissist co-parent blame you for everything. You see, they'll keep blaming you for the breakup of your relationship. That's the first thing they'll do. They'll also make you feel that you are the wrong one, the bad parent here. Because narcissists don't take blame. They don't have a sense of responsibility. When they know that they are the one who screwed things up, they'll never admit it. They'll try to put all the blame on you, their victim, for everything that went wrong, for everything that never worked out. They'll blame you. Now, you will go through that with your narcissistic co-parent. They'll try to make you look like the bad person in this relationship that you had. They'll want to guilt trip you, to make you feel guilty for breaking down the family. They'll make you they'll want to make you feel guilty for not giving your children a chance to be raised by both parents. Don't allow your narcissistic co parent to do that to you. You're not the one to be blamed here. They're just trying to manipulate you. They want to make you run back to them and beg them for forgiveness. They want to hoover you back. That's why they're guilt tripping you. That's why they're, that's why they're blame shifting, blaming you for every mistake that happened. Now, another way co-parenting can happen is talk to your partner that is your co your, narciss, your ex uh, partner who you are co-parenting with about the children when you talk to them talk to them only about the children focus on the children alone when you leave a narcissistic partner the first thing that comes to your head is to go no contact go zero no contact cut all communication with them cut all ties with them but if you have children it is impossible because the two of you are supposed to be co-parenting that means there must be some contact in that relationship that means that you have to communicate with your ex about your children now the narcissist partner that you're co-parenting with will do everything to hit you through those children because that is the only thing that you are communicating with them about. They'll try to talk to you about everything that happened. Try to manipulate you so that you can get back together. Never allow that narcissistic ex-partner to hoover you back at any cost, no matter what. Remember, narcissists are always master manipulators. When they want something, reject it. Whatever they want, say no. They'll be patient. And slowly by slowly, they'll try to hoover you back. So to avoid this, talk to your narcissistic ex that you're co-parenting with. Talk to them only about the children. Only look at them as the father of your kids and nothing else, nothing more. Shut down all of your personal emotions you had or you might still have for this man. Even if you are deeply 
you're still deep in love with them, shut down those emotions and look at that person as only the father of your children. The other thing when it comes to co-parenting, make a plan and stick to it. Have a schedule and stick to it. You have to must have a plan of visit of agreed visiting hours or days. And you have to stick to this if you want a peaceful life. Because the narcissist will, will try to destroy your life. They'll try to continue destroying your life, messing up with your mind by ruining your plans, by not picking the kids when they should pick them, by not picking the kids when you agreed that they will see them. They'll want to pick the kids when at hours or times that you never agreed. So don't allow this under any circumstances. Because if you do, you are giving that narcissist more ways of controlling you, controlling your time, controlling your mind, controlling everything about you. So be strict with a schedule and or plan and stick to it. The other way of co-parenting with a narcissist, be the best example for children. Be the best parent in your in your, the way you conduct yourself you can teach your children important moral values so be very objective about it so you have to be the best because you don't know what your children are learning from their the other narcissistic parent don't be that bad example to your children. So show your children the importance of self-care, of self-love. Teach your children the importance and the difference between good and bad, right and wrong. Don't explain to your children why their father is not behaving properly. Don't try. Don't focus too much on that. Instead, teach them to be better than their parent. Teach them to be better than their narcissistic parent with your own examples. Teach them by showing them. Don't mention that narcissistic parent. Again, another way of co-parenting with a narcissist, you can educate your children about narcissistic abuse. Let your children know about this abuse. Let them know about toxic abuse. Use all your strategies and teach them so that they cannot become a victim of a narcissist too. Explain to them that they are free to tell you anything that is bothering them. So you have to teach your children to be able to identify different types of abuses including narcissism. Narcissistic relationships are one of the most terrible relationships that one can ever get into. When you're dealing with a narcissist, everything is about them. They are the center of the world. They need to be on the limelight. They need to be the center of attention. Now, when you are tired with this kind of a person who's selfish, self-centered, self-absorbed, egocentric, egotistic individual, person who only focuses on their own needs, they lack empathy, they are arrogant, they are always in constant need of admiration and attention and praise and recognition. When you are finally done with this kind of a person, when you are done with this kind of relationship, so, and you decide to call it quits, and you walk away from this narcissistic relationship, it's not going to be that easy as you think. Walking out of that narcissistic relationship does not mean it is the end of the road. No, 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 no. The narcissist will not let you escape that easily. No, 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 no. And if they let you escape easily, just know it's not going to be that easy because you'll be emotionally crippled for a very long time. You might find yourself finding it very difficult to trust anyone for a very long time. You'll be looking at every relationship 
I'm thinking, wow, this is another relationship that, that is going to hurt me. This is another relationship that is getting me imprisoned. So when you meet a narcissist, remember, they will love bomb you. They will look so perfect at the beginning of the relationship. They look like the best person you've ever met. They will flatter you. They will buy you expensive gifts. Take you on expensive vacations, dinners. They'll tell you exact words that you want to hear. Things that you need to hear. They need someone to drink so that they can feed their fragile ego, so that they can boost their egos. So, when you walk away from that kind of a person, when you leave this narcissist, they will not just let you go. The first thing they'll do is to stalk you. They will stalk you. They'll be hurt because you left them. Because they've lost narcissistic supply. So they'll stalk you everywhere. They'll never accept the fact that you've gone. Their ego is too big. They, they focus so much on their own needs. They'll be pissed off and angry. They'll swing into narcissistic rage. How dare you leave them? So they'll start stalking you and harassing you everywhere. You'll be meeting them by accident. You'll be seeing them everywhere, online, physically. They'll be doing things, stalking you and harassing you. They'll be doing that because that makes them feel superior to you. And when they cannot make you, when they, can, they, can't make, they can't feel superior, it makes them become very desperate. The moment you left the narcissist, the moment you dubbed them, they started to feel powerless. They need that power back. So they're stalking you and harassing you to get that power back. Again, after escaping a narcissistic relationship, they'll play hot and cold. They'll be in mood swings. They will try to get in touch with you after you breaking up with them. They'll try to get back to you. They'll try to get back together with you. They will they'll retry those, those moves they did on you during the love bombing stage. In order to get you back They will do everything. And if you don't fall for them again, they will lose it. They'll be so angry. They'll be mad with you. The demon in them will come out. Their real self will come to the surface. He realizes what he has done. He might try to be a good person. All in an aim to hoover you back again. Or sometimes they just might become good and stay that way because you've made them powerless. Now, uh, another thing that you should know after you have escaped a narcissistic relationship, they will go on a smear campaign. They'll talk negative things about you. They'll trash talk you. They'll want to destroy your reputation. They will lie to everyone about you. They will not respect any boundaries that you have put in place. Again, after escaping a narcissistic relationship, the other thing you should know is that they will try to manipulate you. Remember, these are masters in the manipulation game. You'd, so you don't give the narcissist any reason or hope that you, the two of you, can get back together. Even if you still love that narcissist, you must stop loving them. You have to shut those feelings down. Because you know that the narcissist will not change. Period. Full stop. So you have to shut those feelings down. You have to stop loving that master manipulator. Because they will manipulate you again and again and again. They will destroy you. They will crush you. They will punish you. You will be forever be crying and happy, sad, and you might even have an early death because of this kind of monster in your life. 
So, they'll try to manipulate you, but you can play the grey rock if you cannot go no contact. Again, the, I think you should know after escaping a narcissist, they need to be right all the time. They need to win. You left them, but they will do everything in their power to win that breakup. They have fragile egos. They must boost their ego. He needs to win. They need to win. She needs that narcissist that you escaped needs to win. So they will do everything to get you, to get back with you and even break up with you if possible, just to win. Remember, the narcissist has a fragile ego. They are very pride people. They are very proud people. So when you have their ego, when you've dubbed them, they are in pain. They will do everything to revenge, to hurt you. They will want to backstab you. They will want to blackmail you. They will want to expose the secrets you, to you told them about yourself. Any emotion you shared with them, they will want to put it out there in the public. They will want to embarrass you. He'll do this to revenge. He'll do this to hurt you. The other thing you should know after escaping a narcissistic relationship, they'll blame you. They'll blame you for everything. Everything that went wrong in that relationship, they'll blame you. Everything that never worked out in that relationship, they'll blame you. They'll want to, you to believe that you're the one who destroyed that relationship. They will love playing the victim. So they'll make sure that you know it, that you are the one who is to blame for everything. This video, how to grey rock your narcissistic husband. If you are in a relationship with a narcissist, who is your husband, who is very abusive and toxic, then this video is for you. This video is about grey rocking method in dealing with that narcissistic husband. Well, the grey rock method is a passive way of dealing with narcissists in personal relationships. When you talk about narcissists, we're talking about people who have this self-centeredness. They are self-absorbed, selfish, egocentric, egotistic individuals who lack empathy and who have a, need, a constant need for admiration, attention, acknowledgement, recognition. The Grey Rock Method is a smart and safe way to protect yourself from a narcissistic husband and even other toxic people in your life. The Grey Rock Method helps you to take care of your mental health and foster a climate of psychological safety. Your mental health, your well-being, mental well-being is very important. So what is the Grey Rock Method? What do we mean by Grey Rock Method? The grey rock method is a distraction strategy used to get toxic people to leave you alone. The grey rock method involves behaving with these people in a non-responsive way. Grey rocking includes acts like avoiding eye contact and being flat-faced while listening to them. When you grey rock someone, it makes them become so bored by your detached attitude that they let go of you. Grey rocking means you are acting like a grey coloured stone that is unattractive and reactive to everything said and done to it. In real life, Grey rocking involves ignoring a narcissist's attempts to engage and refusing to pay them attention. Grey rocking allows you to get back at someone who has offended you but doesn't want to apologize. So when you grey rock these people, you appear to stay unaffected by whatever that person does for you, good or bad. Now, how does the grey rock 
method work on your narcissist husband? How do you grey rock a narcissist husband? Number one, show no emotions. Have this emotionless, emotionless face. Don't show any anger, any surprise, any distress. Just have this stoic expression. Be cool, calm, and collected. Be composed. Let that narcissistic husband think what's happening. I expected this person to react. But they are not reacting. They are not screaming. They are not shouting. They are just there, stone-faced. So avoid interacting with that narcissistic husband unless you have to. And when you have an interaction with them, keep your interactions very brief. Keep things factual, impersonal, and don't display any emotions. And keep your responses purely transactional. And steer clear of straight talks. And you can also learn to give one word replies like yes, no, or okay. Even if your narcissistic husband talks excitedly, or even if they yell at you, refrain from showing any emotional reaction. So you can also observe in the mirror how you appear when you feel anxious fearful, depressed, or frustrated, and then try putting on a, a deadpan expression, an emotionless face. Practice how to switch from expressive to emotionless in a matter of seconds. So if you want to grey rock your narcissist, then do not show expressions or emotions. The number two way of grey rocking your narcissist is to close your posture. What I mean is that when you are anxious, you lose some of your ability to act and tend to retreat. So make sure that the way your posture is communicating is a way that the narcissist does not get enough supply. Because a tense body posture may trigger negative feelings in you, such as anxiety and fear. So don't stand scared stiff before the narcissist because that way it will make you less capable and less willing to act. So when you are with a narcissist, show some authority and gravity in your stance. Don't have gestures that show you are insecure. Maintain this steady, closed stance, arms across and listen to them uninterested. Again, don't look them in the eyes. That is part of grey rocking. Looking into na an angry narcissist's eyes can evoke instant fear, even before you realize it. So, avoid looking at their eyes. Because when you look at their eyes and the narcissist fright in your eyes, and if they sense you are losing your nerves, they will intensify their yelling and gesturing to subdue you and then make you obey them. So look away from them. Look sideways or downwards towards the floor. Remember, narcissists are also very charming with their eyes and facial mannerisms. They can entice you in seconds, especially if they know what expression of, their, of theirs gets you floored. Again, to grey rock the narcissist, detach your mind. Grey rocking is, just, is not just suppressing your emotions. It is also detaching yourself so much from the situation that the narcissist's words stop making sense and therefore the narcissist becomes incapable of drawing any reaction. So, have some interesting memories in your mind. Let your mind wander to interesting places. Imagine funny things. Instead of focusing on the narcissist. This is what detachment is all about. Another way of grey rocking the narcissist is to tell them you have a task. You are busy. Tell them, remind them that you have another important task to 
embark on. Most likely they'll want to, want to know which task is this. So be ready with an answer. Another way of grey rocking the narcissist is to live at the first chance. Any chance you get when you are close to them, escape. When you escape, that is victory. By the time you are leaving, be like several steps away, you are walking away before you even finish your statement, uh, you are leaving. Again, to grey rock the narcissist, use the grey rock method temporarily. Because grey rocking is a short term tactic. You cannot do it all the time. When we talk about mind games, narcissist play, we are talking about the manipulation tactics designed to mess with your mind and confuse you so that narcissists can use the relationship to their advantage. Narcissists love to use mind games to appear superior than you, more powerful than you, more important than you, unique and more special than you. So let me give you a few examples of narcissistic mind games during the beginning of the relationship during the love bombing stage of the relationship the narcissist will move very fast and seduce you another example the narcissist will suddenly stop responding to your text messages or your calls and they will even start ghosting you another mind game narcissists love playing they will flirt with other people even when they are around you. Another game, they don't want to discuss where the relationship is going. So they leave you hanging, second gazing. Another example, they expect you to know what is going on in their mind. Another manipulative narcissistic mind game is that they don't introduce you to their friends or family. They expect you to know what's going on in their mind. In short, they expect you to be a mind reader. Another example, they blame you for whatever happens. And they act like victims. So they play victims. And they blame shift you. Another example, you have to chase them because they won't call or text you fast. That's another mind game that narcissists love playing. You have to initiate the communication. Again, Another mind game, the narcissist will make promises and don't keep their words later on. So this is future faking. And again, they also withhold feelings and affection. Now, let's look at these mind games that narcissists play in a deeper way. Number one, the narcissist will want to know everything about you. So, one thing you'll think that the narcissist is genuinely interested in your life. You'll think that they, they, they are deeply in love with you. You'll think that they want a future with you. But the narcissist is digging so much information from you so that they can use that against you whenever there's an argument. So that they can use that in future to blackmail you, to backstab you, to control you, to destroy your self-esteem and to feel superior doing it. Remember, the narcissists take pleasure in using your weaknesses against you to punish you, to destroy your life. Another mind game narcissists love playing is gaslighting you. They will play mind games to manipulate you to the point where you start to question your reality, to question the reality, to question your memory, to question your judgment. You told the narcissist something. And they probably forgot to do it. Instead of saying they forgot to do it, they will say you never told them. And they even accuse you of being crazy. They want you to believe that there is something wrong with your head. That you have mental health issues. That your head is not correct. <laughs> now, another mind game that narcissists love playing is love bombing. Love bombing. That's a tool, a manipulative tool loved by all narcissists. 
A narcissist will start by bombarding you with love. They'll start by bombarding you with affection. They overwhelm you with sweet gestures, with constant attention, to make you dependent on them. They will come to your house unannounced. They will send you expensive gifts, send you expensive nice flowers, take you for expensive dinners, expensive vacations. You know, they'll do amazing things for you. But this is meant to make you dependent on them. It's a mind game they're playing on you. Another mind game the narcissist loves playing on their victims is ghosting you. After they've love-bombed you, seduced you, and made so many romantic gestures, then you're almost, now you've gotten into their pocket. Then, do you know what happens? They disappear suddenly. They're nowhere to be seen. That is what ghosting is. You start questioning yourself. What's wrong? Where are they? You look for them in social media. You don't find them. You try calling. They can't be reached. They are, they've cut off all communication with you without any warning. Now, that is another mind game the narcissist is playing on you. Again, another mind game. The narcissist has this fear of commitment. They hate commitment. So, they'll tell you that they didn't want a committed relationship in the first place. If you put them in a corner. They lie to you about how their ex abused them, betrayed them, and made them mistrust everyone. So all this is a mind game to control you. Narcissists will also play the blame shift mind game all the time. Remember, they don't like taking responsibility and accountability for anything. Nothing wrong will ever be their fault. If you call out the narcissist on something, they'll blame you. They'll project the blame onto you or someone else. They'll always play the victim. They'll never take responsibility for their wrongdoings. Now, another mind game, the narcissist will withhold affection from you. They stop having sex with you. You want sex, they don't eat. They stop loving you. They don't stop telling you how much they love you. They stop getting intimate with you. They don't kiss you. They don't touch you. They withhold that love and attention. They start to stonewall you. They start to give you the silent treatment so that they can get whatever they want from you. They will not even hold your hands anymore. They don't want to do, they don't want to do anything with you. Now you question yourself, what's wrong? What they are doing is playing a mind, narcissistic mind game called withholding affection. Again, the narcissist will play mind games on you by triangulation. They will use triangulation. Triangulation is where the narcissist maintains the upper hand in a relationship. They bring up a third party into the mix. They bring up Probably they can do bring an ex and start telling you how the ex is better than you. They might bring up their relative, a sibling, a parent. They can even bring a colleague at work, a neighbor. They'll bring anybody in the mix to control you, to make you compete for their attention or to just... Manipulate you easily. Make you jealous. Another mind game narcissists love playing is they use intermittent reinforcement. This is meant to keep you on your toes. Sometimes the narcissist gives you so much love bombing, too much affection. And uh, which is mixed up with some violent behavior. They shout at you, they abuse you verbally. Then they 
love you they take you out they apologize they, then they slap you then again they apologize they do something nice for you they take you on that on that expensive vacation then you come back then they are cheating on you and doing something nasty on you then they again they apologizing and um, buying you flowers and an, and an expensive gifts so all these are examples of intermittent reinforcements the um so the nurses make sure that you keep trying to please them um and uh, you'll just forgive them every time they mistreat you because you think they they didn't mean it again another mind game the narcissist will try to play on you is to isolate you they want to control you completely control you and the best way is to isolate you from your support system of trusted friends and trusted family members Another mind game narcissists play is they flirt with people in front of you. This is meant to make you jealous. This is emotional manipulation. They want you to feel bad. It gives them a chance to accuse you of being jealous. They'll even accuse, they'll gaslight you and accuse you that you're imagining things if you point it out. Again, another manipulative mind game used by narcissists is scaring you. When you call out a narcissist, when you expose them, when you call out their bad behavior, they'll, and you confront them, they can bring issues. They, you, they will bring issues to intimidate you. They will intimidate you so that you fear them, so that you start to fear them, so that you get scared. And, and you don't speak or stand up for yourself. Do you find that people tend to keep their distance from you? Do you feel like people are intimidated by your presence? Well, intimidating people can be very difficult to spot. But in this video, I'm going to give you signs that you are an intimidating person. Signs that you are intimidating. Signs that you have a strong personality that intimidates others, intimidates those around you. Number one sign, you are brutally honest. You are straightforward and honest and direct in your communication. This makes some people uncomfortable. You are brutally honest. You don't beat around the bush. You don't sugarcoat your words. You tell it like it is. If it is white, you say it's white. If it's black, you say it's black. You don't leave no room for misinterpretation. This can make people see you intimidating. Remember, the truth is often difficult to hear. And intimidating people are not afraid of speaking it. You don't mince your words. You don't use flowery language. Or you don't try to soften the blow. You speak it bluntly, directly without hesitation or apology. You are brutally honest. And that's why they find you intimidating. Now, another sign is that you know how to stand up for yourself. You are intimidating because you know yourself. You know your strengths. You know your weaknesses. You don't let anyone take advantage of you or you don't allow anyone to push you around, whether it's in your personal relationships, whether it's at work. You know how to fight for what you want and you don't back down easily you are an intimidating person if you have high standards for yourself and others you know your expectations and you the expectations are very high and your expectations of those around you are also high this can make some people feel like they can't measure up you tr you strive all the time to be the best version of yourself you demand the same standard from those in your life nothing but the best sometimes this can make you become an intimidating person now you are an intimidating person you are intimidating if you really ask for help in the, when in the intimidating people rely heavily on their own capabilities they rarely seek help from others you have a strong personality that dis, that intimidates others if you mainly rely on your capabilities. This can make some people feel that you don't value their input or their ideas. It makes them feel insecure in your presence. 
you are an intimidating person you have a strong intimidating personality if you have a powerful presence you have this air of authority this power about you which can make people see you intimidating now you also are intimidating if you are not afraid to speak up you don't shy away from expressing your opinions and speaking out in conversations you are comfortable being the center of attention and you are not afraid to challenge authority or engage in debates this can make some people feel uncomfortable again you often stand out from the crowd if you are an intimidating person this is due to your unique personalities you have a strong personality this is also due to your strong opinions people will take notice of your uniqueness of your individualism whether it's positive or not you are an intimidating person you have a strong intimidating personality if you make bold statements you often speak your mind without fear of judgment or repercussion you will not hesitate to voice your opinions even if they may not be the popular ones you are an intimidating person you have a strong intimidating personality if you ask a lot of questions you also are intimidating person if you are opinionated and you have strong beliefs you are, you, you have this deep passion about your views and it can make it very difficult for others to disagree or even add their own thoughts and leads and this leads them to feel like they don't have a voice in the conversation you are an intimidating person if you are ambitious and driven intimidating people tend to have a lot of ambition and drive and this can make those around them feel like their goals are unachievable or unattainable you are intimidating if you take charge of any situation you are in control of any situation intimidating people have this urge to take charge and lead in any situation and this can make some people feel, feel like their opinions don't matter or that they are being pushed out you have you are very intimidating if you have a strong sense of self you have a strong intimidating personality if you tend to be very aware of who you are and what you stand for this can make it very difficult for others to relate or connect with you again you are an intimidating person if you are very loyal intimidating individuals have a strong sense of loyalty and dedication which can make them intimidating to those who don't share the same values you are intimidating person if people seem apprehensive around you you'll see people hesitating before they speak or you'll there'll be an awkward pause in the conversation that is discomfort they feel it's it is not necessary because of aggressive behavior on your part you are an intimidating person if you are often the last one to know about social plans you are intimidating person you have a strong intimidating personality if people really challenge your opinions you might be perceived as intimidating when people really challenge your opinions or ideas this might seem like a sign of respect or agreement at first but it strongly suggests that people are afraid to voice their differing views around you you are intimidating if you are often left to handle tough tasks alone you are intimidating if people rarely open up to you and this is the most revealing sign that people find you intimidating they rarely open up to you about their personal lives or challenges this could mean they see you as someone who is not easily approachable or empathetic you are intimidating if if someone who feels intimidated by you the, to them you might be the last person in the world they want to be talking to right now you are intimidating if people around you are too agreeable you see there are people who love to surround themselves with yes men and women so if someone you know agrees with everything you say it's always yes everything you say or do it's always yes then they just might be intimidated by you you are intimidating if those around you say sorry too much you are intimidating if 
people are not interested in you. You are intimidating if people are nervous and fidgety around you. You are intimidating if people around you assume you are against them. You are intimidating if you don't suck up. You don't need someone else's validation or approval because you are confident in your own, uh, own abilities. Now, that makes people see you intimidating. You are intimidating if you are your own master. You are intimidating if you are graceful under pressure. You are intimidating if complainers get on your nerves. People who complain all the time, you know, they, they annoy you. You are intimidating if you don't take any crap from anybody. You have clear boundaries and you will not tolerate anyone who dares cross them. Then you are intimidating. You are intimidating. You have a strong personality that intimidates others because of your wisdom to look past the obvious and your courage to, to challenge assumptions and beliefs. You are intimidating because you don't, you don't take no for an answer. You are intimidating because you know what you want and you go for it. You, your stubbornness and you having a clear vision of your dream life drives you to make even the impossible possible. You are a natural dream chaser and nothing can stand between you and your goals. Now this can make some people uncomfortable. Especially if they are not as driven as you are. Now you are also intimidating if you have a strong moral code. You have strong opinions, but you also have a solid set of principles. You are intimidating if you stick to your guns. You are intimidating if you are picky when it comes to, your, to those around you, when it comes to your friendships or your support system or, or people who you want to be in your circle. People with strong personalities don't just let anyone in their lives. They value meaningful bonds and trustworthiness. So they are extremely picky with their friends. You are intimidating if you don't water down the truth. As I said at the beginning of this video, you are very intimidating when you are brutally honest. Because that is your strong personality trait. You don't beat around the bush. And you don't like sugarcoating or mincing words. You call a spade a spade, not a big spoon. And you say things as they are without worrying if it offends someone. But you only speak the truth when necessary. Usually for the benefit of the one who needs to hear it. Signs you're going crazy. Signs a narcissist is driving you crazy. Number one. Hopeless outlook. If a narcissist is driving you crazy, if you're going crazy, you'll experience feelings of hopelessness. You'll feel like you are worthless, you are valueless, you are nothing. You'll feel lonely and isolated. Another sign you're going crazy, a narcissist is driving you crazy. You, there's loss of interest. The pleasure or enjoyment that you had is gone you no longer enjoy anything you no longer have pleasure doing anything you have lost interest or you've withdrawn from activities that previously lo you are looking forward to you know you have these hobbies that you really enjoyed spending your time in now you You've lost interest. No more sports, no more hobbies, no going out with friends. That's a big sign that you're going crazy. Narcissist is driving you nuts, driving you crazy. Again, another sign you're going crazy, you have this increased fatigue and sleep problems. You hardly sleep well. You're always tired. There's that, this, you feel there's that lack of energy in you. You feel overwhelmed with tiredness. And you ask yourself, what's happening? 
you know, you're going crazy and a narcissist is driving you crazy. You just can't sleep. You can't have a restful sleep. And you feel anxious. And that leads us to the, to the other sign of you being of you going crazy. That is anxiety. You feel nervous. You're restless. You, you, there's this sense of tension in you. You feel you're not safe. You feel you're in danger. You're panicking. You, your heart rate is rapid. You have this rapid breathing. You have this increased or heavy sweating. You're trembling. Your muscle is twitching. Um, you, are, you have trouble focusing or thinking clearly about anything other than one central preoccupation. Why? Because you're going crazy. Narcissist is really driving you crazy. Again, you're going crazy if you are irritable, irritable. You get annoyed very easily. You, you are easily irritable. And you ask yourself, what's happening? Clearly, something is wrong. Your appetite and your weight has changed. That's another sign. Sometimes your appetite might increase and you might gain weight. But sometimes uh, you will lose weight because you're not hungry. All this could be signs that you're going crazy. You're also going crazy if you have these uncontrollable emotions. One moment you have this outburst of anger. The next moment tears are flowing uncontrollably. You're crying. You have these serious mood swings that fluctuate wildly. And these mood swings, they have nothing to do with anything outside of you. Why? Because you're going crazy. Again, you think about death. So much. A narcissist is successfully driving you crazy. Or you're going crazy if you feel sad or down most of the time. You are confused in your thinking. You have this reduced ability to concentrate. You have these excessive fears or worries or extreme feelings of guilt. You have these extreme mood changes of highs and lows. You withdraw from friends and activities. You have this significant tiredness. You have low energy or problems when it comes to sleeping. You are detached from reality. You have this inability to cope with daily problems or stress. You have trouble understanding and relating to situations and to people. You have problems with alcohol or drug, or drug use. You are having major changes in eating habits. And then your sex drive changes. You have this excessive anger. You are very hostile. You are very violent. You have suicidal thinking. All these are indications that you are going crazy. When it comes to sleeping, you realize you have these sleep changes or even appetite changes. You have this dramatic sleep and appetite. Um, or you have this decline in personal care. Your mood changes. You have these rapid or dramatic shifts in emotions or depressed feelings. There's uh, withdrawal, social withdrawal and loss of interest in activities that you previously enjoyed. There's this unusual drop in your functioning at work or in your social activities. You even quit your hobby, doing your hobbies. There's a problem with concentration, problem with thinking. There's the memory or logical thought uh, problem that you can't even explain what's happening. You you have increased sensitivity, you know, to sounds, to smell, to touch. You have loss of initiative or desire to participate in any activity. You have this vague feeling of being disconnected from one, from yourself or from your surroundings. 
and uh, there's this unusual or exaggerated beliefs about your personal powers you know then you feel or you feel or you're suspicious of others you have this strange behavior when it comes to maybe work you this, this increased absenteeism and this worsens your performance then you also have difficulties and problems in relationships with your with peers and even your, with with those you work with so this and and many more are signs that you are going crazy remember if there is anybody in your life who is driving you crazy sometimes it's good to protect your mental health your well-being by cutting them off go no contact stay away from them ignore them block them everywhere for your own meant uh, for for your for your own well-being remember your health is number one. your mental health matters you deserve happiness you deserve a good life Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you've not done so. Thank you.